I worked at my local Walmart from 2007 to 2009 and oftentimes worked in the evenings as I went to college during the mornings. It wasn't the most amazing job, just your typical cashier work, but at least it gave me some experience with customer service and learning to be very, and I mean very patient with people. While 9 times out of 10 customers were kind and they went about their shopping like a normal human being, you had the ones who came into the store already in a mood. One wrong look and you set them off, which leads to a series of this and that and how we are the worst employees in the world and we should think about the customer. Gotta love those people. But here's the thing. While I did have my fair share of angry customers, and a couple of creepy ones too, them being older men trying to hit on this 20 year old college girl, there was one encounter in particular that I remembered the most, mainly because it started off as just another routine shift. There I was in my little station, tired from a long day of lectures and learning about rocks and minerals and geology class trying to stay awake with the music playing over the intercom radio and talking with my co-workers. I recall it being a slower than usual Friday night, the evening rush had already passed us, and finally in what seemed like forever, my break had arrived. This time around I had brought food from home to eat, my mom had packed me some leftover chicken pasta, but unfortunately in my rush to get to work, I would left my food in my car. Thank god it was a cold evening because the last thing I needed was for my food to go bad in 100 degree weather. Bear in mind, when I step out of the Walmart, it's dark out there. There is a decent amount of vehicles in the parking lot and I am parked next to a parking lot light towards the very end of the Walmart building. And nothing seemed out of the ordinary as I approached my Volkswagen Beetle Bug. I take out my key and then bend in and reach into the back seat. There was my food. Just a quick grab, go warm up eat it really fast and back to my shift. But here's when things start to go really wrong. Before I have a chance to back out of my passenger's side, I heard footsteps approaching me. Assuming it was a customer who had just parked and was going to walk past me, I didn't really think much of it. That was until I looked up through the window, and lo and behold, there's a man with one of the creepiest smiles I'd ever seen. Hey, do you have any money on you? He asks me all the while keeping his hands in his jacket pocket and appearing to be fiddling with something. No, I don't, sorry. I tell him slightly annoyed, hoping he would get the idea and leave me alone. Sadly that didn't happen as he just stands there staring until he decides to escalate the already uncomfortable situation. He now grabs my arm as I'm pulling out of my passenger seat and then he attempts to pull me closer to him. It's at this moment I got a huge whiff of alcohol. Well, you see, in the time I was preparing to leave the safety of my vehicle, I didn't stay in there since I needed to get back to my shift. I had reached for the pepper spray that was in my pocket attached to my keys. So with reflexes of a cat, I sprayed the man straight in the face and what follows is him screaming and shouting and yelling vulgarities at me. I mean, I did just pepper spray the man. But it's what he does next that sends me running. Remember how I said he was fumbling around with something in his jacket? Turns out the creep had a small knife with him as he then begins to chase after me, telling me that he was going to kill me. Bear in mind what I had just done to him. Thank the lord I waved down a customer who happens to hear me and in what was an act of bravery, honestly he didn't have to do it. He risks his own safety by tackling down the would-be attacker but not before getting a few scratches on his arm in the process. Now, what I didn't know in the moment was my hero was a retired marine who just so happened to show up to the Walmart at that time to pick up some diapers for his granddaughter. Well, needless to say, the police were called and the man who seemingly came out of nowhere asking me for money but then tried to grab me, for who knows what reasons, was handcuffed and arrested. He was found in possession of that switchblade and even a small ziploc bag with a white powdery substance. So to say I was given nightmare fuel and scared to leave my house for a while would be the understatement of a century. It really changed me a lot and even after all these years I will sometimes think about it and think 
What would have happened had I not pepper sprayed him? Or what would have happened had it not been for that retired marine? One can only imagine. But the good news is I've never had anything like this ever happen to me again. This is a chilling story of mine that happened in February of 2017. Since I still work here, I don't want to give too many details, for privacy reasons of course. However, I will tell you I work at Walmart and as I mentioned, I still do, but now I'm a manager. Anyway, it was an evening shift and I just left the break room after my first break. The store was particularly busy since it was Friday evening and most families are here to do their shopping. I'm busy stocking the apples when an older lady came up to me asking if I could assist her with putting a couple of watermelons into her cart. I gladly agreed and dropped what I was doing to help her. In these moments I began to hear someone arguing. It happens from time to time, but it's usually something like a misunderstanding. The woman thanks me, but just a second later she points over to one of the aisles. Here's where I see one of my co-workers, who for the sake of the story we're going to call Maria. Maria appears to be dealing with a customer that, who from just one look at his face, is mad about something. The man, mid-forties, wearing a khaki-colored trench coat with dark boots and a hat, begins pushing at Maria. Something snapped at me and I rush over to her rescue since for whatever reason nobody was even bothering to intervene. The man then starts yelling at me and says, Why is it that every time I come into the store, you guys never have what I'm looking for? I look at Maria and tell her to get the manager as I do my best to de-escalate the situation. I give him the usual spiel that we're trained to say but this doesn't seem to work. He starts to grow even more angry and even starts to push at me. I'm starting to get pretty scared at this point. The guy outweighed me by an estimated 100 pounds and was about 6 foot 3. I'm 5 foot 11, 170 pounds. Pretty scrawny to be honest. I was doing all I could not to fight back, which is why I tell him he needs to leave or we would be calling the cops. That seemed to have worked as he starts to walk away. But then all of a sudden he comes charging at me, who the next moment seemed to have gone by in slow motion. As I see him charging down the aisle, I ended up jumping to my rear, and the man falls and tumbles into a display of cookies. By the way, rip cookies. Finally, a customer comes over to my rescue and gets the guy into a sort of wrestling hold. My manager and a couple of more co-workers have just arrived and even more customers are coming to assist. Well, it turned out that the man who came to help me was an off-duty police officer who had just entered the store when he saw the commotion. I'm very thankful for him showing up when he did because the guy who originally caused all this madness had a knife on him. Well, maybe that's an understatement. He had one of those little multi-purpose tools that did have a little blade in it. That's what I mean by him having a knife. I don't think his intentions were to ever use it as he never made motions to grab it. It was just something that he was carrying alongside his wallet and phone, but I guess we'll never truly know. In any case, they did take him away and I did press charges, but that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm still working here and although we will sometimes get rowdy customers, nothing comes as close to that very creepy incident on that day. Mugged for toilet paper from Walmart. Judging just by the title of my story, I'm pretty sure you already know where this is going. This took place during a certain global issue becoming a very serious problem. People were going crazy heading to the stores, buying all the food, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, you name it. Which if I have a second to leave my opinion, it's that those of you who were buying way more than you needed to, Shame on you. Thank God, however, grocery stores were allowing the elderly to shop early. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Because of all the madness, I waited about a week before heading to Walmart so I could pick up some essentials for my grandma. Unfortunately, she's too old and brittle to constantly be moving, which was why I was doing her the favor. When I got to Walmart at about 7.30 a.m., there was already a line of about 25 people already waiting to grab what they had come for. 
Eventually, 8 a.m. chimes on my watch and one by one, we're slowly let into the store. Of course, almost everybody went to grab toilet paper, but we were limited to one per family. I got the typical Walmart brand seeing as there weren't many options, and then after I went along with the rest of my grocery shopping, I picked up some eggs, milk, orange juice, pasta, etc. Once I was about to go check out, I realized I needed to grab some toothpaste which meant I would need to walk by the toilet paper section. As I do, I hear a man arguing with one of the employees, something about being out of toilet paper and how he would, and I quote, kill for toilet paper. It was pretty eerie, especially considering the tone of voice he had, which was why I got involved. Look dude, everybody had to wait in line. You don't think there are others who couldn't find what they needed? Try a different store. It's not their fault, I said to this 30-ish year old looking man. He curses me out before he just walks away. Talk about a jerk. Either way, the employee thanked me for helping her and I continued toward the cashier. Fast forward to after paying for all my groceries, the loads of people were still pouring into the Walmart and I was so glad not to be dealing with the crowds. Hey, didn't I see you in the store not too long ago? Somebody calls out to me as I'm approaching my vehicle. It was the man who had been arguing with a Walmart employee in which I had to get involved. Yeah, what do you want? Your toilet paper. Give it to me and there won't be any issues. No dude, get your own. What he does next gave me the chills. It really opened my eyes to just how far some people will go just for toilet paper. I'm not going to ask you again. Hand it over. He takes out a revolver and forcefully grabs the toilet paper from my shopping cart. Honestly, what was I to do? Was it worth fighting back? I don't think so. I pretty much just stood there in shock before I finally snapped out of it and run back to the Walmart to inform a security guard. Fast forward a few days later and the man was caught and arrested. It turned out that this wasn't the first time he had been in trouble with the law. Even before all of this madness had begun, he had previous brushes with the law and was connected with another series of armed robberies. So to people out there who are shopping, be very careful with those you come into contact with because there are some very crazy people out there. It was January 2016 when I first met Samuel at my job working at Walmart. We were on break when it happened and he complimented my phone case, which was of an anime I really loved. Safe to say that was all it took for us to hit it off, and after about a week, we started to hang out after work. We went out to dinner, went to the movie theater, and hung out at his house. After a month, we became official. So far, there wasn't really anything that indicated that Samuel was a bad person. After all, he was always doing everything for me, as I did the same back. It wasn't too long, however, before he began to spin me around his finger, as the saying goes. One time, my friend Trish invited me to her birthday party, and naturally, I brought along Samuel so she could meet him. At the party were a couple of my old friends from high school who I hadn't seen in many years. Naturally, they were happy to see me and gave me hugs as well as compliments. Samuel didn't take this too lightly as he got into a fight with a few of them. At first, it was just an argument, but it escalated to Samuel grabbing a wine bottle, smashing it, and then using the sharp end to go after my friend James. Luckily, a huge group of guys managed to interfere before things got too out of hand. My friend James did have to get some stitches though. Surprisingly, he didn't press charges. The next day I had a serious talk with Samuel and told them that he couldn't just go around attacking my friends just because they gave me hugs. He apologized, blaming his insecurities and promised it would never happen again. Safe to say his anger and manipulative nature continued. He barred me from talking to other guys, even when I was working at Walmart, and even wanted me to show him who I was talking to anytime I was texting. I later found out he secretly installed an application which allowed him to see what was going on on my phone. It's something I ended up bringing up when I later found it in one of my folders, one that I never checked. That was the breaking point for me. 
I quit Walmart and broke up with him, telling him to never contact me again. I'm sorry, but even I knew that was becoming a little too much. I didn't mention this yet, but along with what looked to be his constant obsessions, he would always call me the most terrible names you can possibly imagine, even when I was talking to customers. And the twist was he said that he was just joking. I'll tell you one thing, I sure wasn't laughing, and neither were the customers I was assisting. Enough with that bit. On to the day when my life would be forever changed. I was just arriving from school and happened to see a couple of police cars parked in my driveway. I also saw my mom and little sister talking to some of the officers on the front porch. Obviously, I was confused at what was taking place, so I park and walk over to check. My little sister comes crying over to me as one of the police officers soon explains what had taken place. My ex showed up to my house with a gun and broke in demanding to see me. I'm just so thankful he didn't do anything to my sister and my mother, but he did lock himself into my room. About 45 minutes later a back and forth, the police officers eventually got him to surrender. Talk about scary. The last I heard, Samuel had been spending time in jail for multiple charges and we have since now moved away. Edit. For those wondering, I had a bunch of missed calls from my mother that night Samuel broke in, but I wasn't able to see them. Since my phone battery had pretty much died on me. I used to work at Walmart as a part time gig during my years in college, and during my time with the company, I had my fair share of creepy encounters with scary people. While most instances involved angry customers not being able to find what they're looking for, or yelling at you for something that's not your fault, you had those rare instances where truly you're left going. I sure didn't expect that. Now, while I can go into great detail of these rowdy customers, I want to instead focus on one specific incident. Now, with that out of the way, I guess I should start by saying I typically worked from Thursday to Sunday in the evenings. This was to accommodate my school schedule, which luckily Walmart was able to work around. I'll give them props for something. Anyway, as for what I actually did, I was a store greeter. Those employees that stand in the front entrance and welcome you into the store. Again, nothing too special. During one of my shifts while I greeted customers, I noticed an older woman, late 60s or early 70s, who was having a difficult time pushing her shopping cart out of the store. Normally, I don't leave my position unless it's break time or I'm off the clock, but I felt bad seeing her struggling. Luckily, I see my manager who was just beginning to make her way toward me either way, so I ask her if I could help out the woman. She gladly accepts and tells me to take my time while she covered for me with greeting customers. That was another plus about the Walmart I worked at. The manager was super chill and super helpful. We are actually still friends today. Anyway, I walk up to the woman with a smile over my face and say, Excuse me, ma'am, but I'd love to help you with getting your groceries to your car. You should have seen the smile across her face. Bless her heart. She was very thankful for the offer and gave me a huge hug just like that. Super sweet of her. We start making our way toward her vehicle while she started telling me how much I reminded her of her granddaughter, always smiling and helping out any way she could. Something about those words still resonate with me today. Once we're at the vehicle, she opens the trunk and I start putting in the groceries. About 10 to 20 seconds later, while I was distracted, I heard footsteps approaching. Thinking it was another customer, I tried not to mind it, but then I heard the old woman let out a sudden gasp. I quickly turned my attention toward the sounds, accidentally bumping my head on the inside of the trunk to see a man in a hoodie. He was brandishing a knife and asking the old woman to hand over her purse. Seeing this brought a chill down my spine as it reminded me of an incident when I was younger. It also involved a man with a knife who made off with my purse. Deja vu much? Well, Grandma, which is what I'm going to call her from this point on, wasn't about to hand over her purse as she refused, even going as far as to say if the guy was smart enough, he would just leave. I'll give points to grandma for standing up to this robber, but well, let's be serious for a second. The guy has a knife. 
there's only so much bravery you can display until it gets you into some serious trouble. Well, little did I know that grandma here was a proud owner of a small revolver as she takes it out of her purse, causing the creep to freeze in place. Suddenly that confident smirk the man was displaying turned into one of panic, as without saying anything else, he books it out of there, never to be seen again. I remember going, wow, that was amazing ma'am, to which she responded with a simple, good people always win. Again, bless her heart. Once we were settled, she gives me a hug and even offers to give me $20, but I told her I wasn't allowed to accept any money. She accepts my answer and then leaves shortly later. As for the creep, I return back to the Walmart where I let my manager and the security guard know and they told me they would take care of it, but nothing ever came up, and part of me likes to hope that grandma scared him so good, he decided to change his ways. I worked as a security guard from 2014 to 2016 at everybody's favorite discount store. It was my first ever job working in retail and it was pretty interesting to say the least. Petty crimes like shoplifters were always my favorite to deal with because they knew they were caught red-handed but they'd always come up with the most lame excuses. My personal favorites include, I thought these were free samples, or can't you just let this slide just this once? Maybe if it were like a candy bar or whatever. I mean, I think they can go without a bar of Twix, but jewelry? Come on. Well, okay, maybe cheap jewelry. And yes, before you begin, I understand the jewelry isn't exactly the most fancy, but they're the ones that are more expensive that we sell here. But okay, enough diddle daddling around. Let's go on to my scary experience. It was a random Friday night, which was our busiest day, and I was in the break room enjoying the Subway sandwich I purchased just earlier before my shift. As I chowed down on my bacon ranch melt, an employee walks into the break room looking like she was in a panic. Hey, are you okay? What's up? There's some guests fighting. I know you're on break, but could you help us out? I mean, that's what I was being paid for, right? Not only for preventing shoplifters, but ensuring everybody was civil. I sighed in disappointment knowing my sandwich would once again get cold as I now lick the ranch off my fingers and head toward where the situation was taking place. Thinking I would have to break up a fight between mothers arguing over their last pair of shoes, I'm surprised to see it's two adult males. These dudes were huge. If I was the NFL commissioner, I would have instantly have signed them on to a huge contract. Unfortunately, this meant that if I would have to get involved, I was at a disadvantage. Now, I'm not that short. I'm 6 foot and weigh around 220 pounds, but these dudes were easily 6 foot 3 to 6 foot 5, 240 to 260 pounds. Anyway, I tried to ask what it was they were arguing about, but they ignored me and started duking it out. By now, one of the employees was on the phone with the police, and I started to advise people to stay back. That would be the least of our concerns. The guy who was clearly winning decided, which to this very day frightens me, he took out a pistol and then starts waving it at the guy and the rest of the crowd. They surely didn't pay me enough for that. He basically curses out the man who was on the ground saying he'll settle this another day and how he had gotten off lucky. One of the women who had been begging the man to stop, who by now I'm guessing was the wife, walks off with the armed man. At that point, my number one concern was ensuring the safety of those in the store and the man who had basically gotten his behind handed over to him. Once EMTs and officers arrived, they took our statements and they made sure to check up on everyone. A week or so later, we learned more information. Apparently, the man and wife duo, which had been confirmed to us, had seen this man who turned out to be the wife's ex. They got into an argument and then in a fight and so on and so forth, they pulled out a pistol and you get the idea. From the last I heard, the dude with the gun got arrested. So that was my incident that all my friends always ask me to share. If you're listening, friends, I hope you enjoyed hearing it again through the voice of the creepy fox. This was in 2014 and takes place in Los Angeles. It happened on a Saturday evening and I had gone over to my cousin's house because we were going to be watching WrestleMania the following afternoon. That night when I got there, we went to a Walmart to pick up some snacks such as chips, salsa, soda, 
That way we had something to munch on while we were watching wrestling, which was a tradition of ours alongside Domino's Pizza. When we got back to my cousin's house, we realized we had forgotten the most important thing, the paper plates. Realizing our error, my cousin said he would gladly pick them up, but I ended up insisting I go alone as he was pretty tired after working a 12-hour shift at his security job. So I got into his car I then drove 5 minutes to the Walmart to pick up the plates. I also picked up some cookies because I wanted to have some with milk before I went to bed. In making my way back to the vehicle, I'm now in the dark parking lot when I get approached by a man in a Dodger sweatshirt. I gave him a friendly smile thinking he was just going to pass me and go about his evening, but then he walks and stops directly in my path as he whispered to me, Hand over your wallet. I sort of did this awkward chuckle before attempting to push past him. He again steps in front of me, and with an even more firm voice demands I give him my wallet. This time I'd seen he had his hands in his pockets and he was in the process of pulling something out. I don't know what happened next, but something in me said, get out of this situation fast. I attempt to run, but he grabs my arm, pulling me closer. I was on the verge of a panic attack and I'm sweating profusely when indeed he flashes a knife in front of my face. And that's when I did something I truly believe saved me. I kicked him right in the balls, and then he lets go of my arm before stumbling back, falling into some shopping carts. I booked it back toward the Walmart where he now follows me in, but after he sees all the people staring at him, he turns the other way and runs back outside. Thank God that with a proper description that I got, along with good Samaritans that happened to see what was happening, we were able to give a proper description to police officers, but luckily he was soon caught and arrested. And now although that was one less bad guy off the streets, it didn't stop me from having nightmares for the following months. Which, if I could add on to my story, that's not something you really want. This didn't take place on Halloween, but it did take place a couple of days before, and it does have to do with the holiday. So, I'm pretty busy. I work for an insurance firm, and I work 40 hours a week sometimes more due to overtime. I mention these details because I had procrastinated on buying decorations and candy to pass out to kids. I was actually off on Halloween and I wanted to finally do something fun for the kiddos. Thus, when I got off of work, I head to a local Walmart to pick up some decorations and some candies and chocolate. I actually took longer than expected since I was also doing my grocery shopping for the week. When I was done, it was close to 9pm and I was heading back to my car to head home. I opened the back and one by one I start putting the groceries in while I was talking to my sister on the phone. As I had my back turned, I ended up hearing someone. Hey sis, uh, give me a minute. I think somebody's trying to grab my attention. Sure, no problem. I'll wait, my sister said. We were talking about movies or something like that. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, was there something I could help you with? It was a homeless man and I assumed he wanted some change. I was feeling generous and I reach into my pocket to give him five dollars. He accepts it and says thank you and I assume he was going to leave me alone as I returned to putting the remainder of my groceries in my car. Was there something else I could help you with? He just stood there staring me up and down not saying a single word. I thought maybe he wasn't all there so I now move the shopping cart away from him and head towards the driver's door. However, before I could close it, he puts his hand on the door, and now he says, Why are you so pretty? Can I go with you, please? The way he said it sent chills down my spine, but I was able to close the door and put the key into the ignition. The dude now jumps in front of me and starts flailing his arms around, banging on the hood of my car. It was so creepy, and it's now I begin to realize the man was definitely on something. So I couldn't go forward since I didn't want to hit him and thus I reverse. He runs over to the back and begins yelling and hitting the bumper and then the back window. He actually caused a crack to form but after a back and forth game I leave as he starts to chase me down. I know it's not as creepy as other stories but when I went to that same Walmart a couple of weeks later I was doing some shopping. All was going well until I heard a bunch of commotion and screaming. 20 seconds later, about three security guards run past me. All the customers, including myself, went to see what was happening. 
and sure enough, they had some dude restrained on the ground. What was creepy was two things. One, there was a knife laying on the ground next to him, and two, he was the same man who had been trying to get into my car a couple of nights before Halloween. He was taken away by the police, but not before screaming and yelling all these incoherent things. So, there you have it. Creepy dude interrupting me during my Halloween shopping at Walmart, only to return into my life a couple of weeks later at that same Walmart, but luckily, he was stopped before he could try to do any harm. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to today's video. If this is the first time you listen to one of these podcasts, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified of any and all future uploads here on the Creepy Fox. Also, consider picking up some Creepy Fox merchandise, which you can find right below the video player. I've got some awesome designs right here for the summertime that you'll enjoy, so check them out and see what you think. Also, if you'd like to gain early access to brand new videos as well as some exclusive videos, check out the channel memberships option on my page. Which, speaking of channel members, let's go ahead and give my amazing channel members a quick shout out. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Scott, Sean, Corey, Linz, and Maribel. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you as well to all the regular viewers who watch my videos, leave likes, comments, and tell your family and friends about my channel, so that way they can subscribe and enjoy what we have on offer here on the Creepy Fox. Anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care, and have yourself an amazing day.